Good morning. On behalf of Father Mike, myself, Father Alec, and again all those involved in the team who are putting together these this liturgy for you on the 18th Sunday, a warm welcome. Jesus feeds all those who come to him. He feeds us in a special way when we come to receive him in the Eucharist. He becomes present to us in his very self. May we receive this gift of himself with great joy and gratitude this day and every day. So let's begin. Hello, my name's Gordon and I'm from St Gregory's Parish. This is a reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O, oh, come to the water all of you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. This is the word of the Lord. You open wide your hand, O Lord, and grant our desires. You open wide your hand. You open wide your hand, O Lord, and grant our desires you open wide your hand the lord is kind and full of compassion slow to anger abounding in love how good is the lord to all compassionate to all his creatures Open wide your hand, O Lord, and grant our desires. You open wide your hand. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them the food in due time. You open wide your hands and grant the desires of all. My name is Steve Rooney and I am a parishioner at St Catherine's. A reading from St Paul to the Romans. Nothing can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled or worried, or being persecuted, or lacking food or clothes, or being threatened or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Hello, 
My name is Anne from St. John Vianney's Parish. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But the people heard of this, and leaving the towns, went after him on foot. So, as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them, and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples went to him, and said, This is a lonely place, and the time has slipped by. So send the people away, and they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. But they answered, All we have is five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he said. He gave orders that the people were to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven and said the blessing and breaking the loaves, handed them to his disciples, who gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected the scraps remaining, twelve baskets full. Those who ate numbered about five thousand men, to say nothing of the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord There are a few different accounts in the Gospels of the multiplication of loaves and fishes. Each was written to get over a particular point. This morning, I'd like to share an imaginary account written some time ago, which I think contains the lessons of the miracle stories. It happened two weeks after the first miracle. The same 5,000 people gathered at the same spot because they'd heard that Jesus would be there. This time, however, many of them had brought food with them. Peter was there, and he stood up to tell them that Jesus had been delayed, but he'd be long later. They sat down to wait. The day was wearing on, and naturally, they got very hungry. Those who had brought no food looked with envy at those who had. The latter, however, were too embarrassed to take out their supplies and eat in front of the others. Peter was put into a very awkward situation. He was being pestered with questions as to when Jesus was coming and whether or not there was any food to be had. Midway through the afternoon, he had an idea. The first thing he did was to lay out seven empty baskets. Then he stood up and he spoke to the people. He said, I know you're all getting very hungry, so am I. Hands up all those who brought food along. About one hand in four was raised, including Peter's own. Turning to those who had brought food along, he said, what about pulling the food? Then he gave the lead. He put his food into one of the baskets, but someone spoke up. There's not going to be enough for everyone. Peter answered, I'm aware of that. But if we share what we have, then everyone can have a little. Can you multiply the loaves? Someone was heard to ask sarcastically. No, I can't, replied Peter calmly. But I promise you, if we share what we have, I'll see that it's given out equally. At last, a few came forward and put their picnic into the baskets. The others got up and taking their food with them, disappeared over a little hill to the east. There, they sat down and they began to eat. 
Peter looked at the pitiable response to his appeal and realised that the situation was hopeless. However, at that very moment, a figure was seen approaching from the west. The cry went up, it's the master! And it was. At a glance, the master took in the scene. He could see that the people were starving. We must send them away at once, Peter said. No, replied Jesus. They might die in the way. Many of them have come a long distance. How much food do you have? Peter looked into the basket and did a quick count. Uh, seven loaves and a couple of small fish, he answered. Let's begin then, said the master. And with that, he took the loaves and the fish, gave thanks and broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute among the people. Everyone present got as much as they wanted. As they sat there eating, the people suddenly realised what had happened and what a wonderful person Jesus was. There was an explosion of goodwill and joy. People who up to this had been total strangers began to talk to one another like lifelong friends. People who'd been enemies forgot their quarrels and shook hands. While this was happening, Jesus left them and went over the hill to where the others had gone. By now, they had finished eating and they were sitting in little silent groups and cliques. There was a noticeable lack of joy amongst them. I and mean, then that's not surprising, but that's not surprising because selfishness puts the dampers on joy. Jesus stood there among them. He couldn't bear his eyes on them. On them. They felt ashamed. Then there was a chorus of voices saying, there wasn't enough for everyone. Jesus replied, no, of course there wasn't enough. For those who are selfish, there'll never be enough. He paused and then he added, yet took a look around and see how much food you've wasted. They did so. And to their horror, they saw lots of food thrown on the ground, leftovers after they had eaten their fill. Then someone said, your disciples weren't able to multiply the loaves. They weren't able to change them. Jesus said, that's not their job. Their job was to ensure that the food was shared out fairly. In that miracle story, we see the compassion and care of Jesus. We see the good shepherd in action, healing, teaching and feeding the flock. All those years ago when Pope John Paul spoke to the young people at Murrayfield in Edinburgh, he quoted this passage from St John's account of the feeding of the 5,000 and told how it was our patron Andrew who came forward with a mere five loaves and two fish. He told the youngsters that Jesus took all that Andrew had to offer and transformed it. But he couldn't ever have worked a miracle if he hadn't been given the five loaves and the two fish. Insignificant and poultry though it may be, and may have seemed, it was enough. The lesson for us today is the same as it was then. Our problem today is the same as it was then. It's not that we're unable to multiply the loaves, but rather that we are unwilling to share them. That's our calling as missionary disciples to share all our resources so that everyone has enough. Simple, though not always easy. Hi, my name's Alyssa and I'm from St Catherine's Parish. We pray in the words of St Paul that nothing will come between us and the love of Christ. May we recognise through the difficult times that we will be strengthened by the power of Christ who loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hunger and poverty are experienced throughout our world. 
We pray that world leaders work to share our Earth's wealth of resources to meet the needs of the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time of exam results, we pray for our young people. May they become ever more aware of their individual talents and the love that God has for each of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the Lord give new hope and strength to those who are feeling discouraged and suffering from disappointments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that all who are ill, especially those who feel alone, may find in Christ and in his people the path to hope and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we entrust them to your care and pray for those who face the difficult adjustments of bereavement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the Lord who heals and feeds us, bear us up and accompany us on our path to his gift of eternal life. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.